Hi everyone, I'm back with another video from this Diablo 4 Season 4 PTR and today I want to talk about Druids, in particular Tornado, but in general there are some cool new tools that this class has gotten that is probably also somewhat overlooked and that is pretty important to understanding why Druids are actually going to be very strong in Season 4. What you can see here right now is myself playing a Tornado Druid. I've tried out a lot of different stuff on the PDR. For example, you might have seen my Hurricane Druid. Uh, Hurricane is now a build, like a real build, not just a meme. And I'm not talking about Boulder Hurricane. I'm talking about Hurricane killing stuff. So that is a thing. And on top of this, there are some other pretty good builds. For example, Tornado, which I actually expect to be like probably the overall winner, or at least somewhere at the top for this class. And I also don't really expect like, some heavy nerfs for the Druids compared to other classes like the Barbs, which actually makes it not even that unlikely that Druid might just end up being the top class in the game again. But we'll see. For now, I want to kind of like walk you through what is going to happen in Season 4, in particular with Wolf builds. So here we have Tornado that usually uses Tempest Raw to convert into a uh, Wolf form. So you see this here right now, every time I cast Tornado, I am a Werewolf. This is done with the Tempest Raw and there are a lot of extra synergies that unlock from that. Usually there's some stuff on the Paragon boards and you have stuff like Envenom application and these kind of things. But on top of this, now you also get some reworked synergies from transforming in different forms. And the idea is that you kind of like transform back between bear and wolf constantly to get the most out of this combo. And you see here right now I'm doing debilitating rolls all the time and tramples all the time. So the way that this works is that first of all, we have some really powerful buffs. Here's the Wild Heart Hunger, for example. This is a uh, new pair of unique boots that you can get. They have really good stats. They have damage reduction. They have um, this movement speed effect. The attacks reduce evade cooldown and some extra damage. And then they have this special effect that allows you to stack up like a ramping damage buff, basically up to 20 stacks. That gives you a total of 30% damage at the end on your boots. That is obviously a really nice, a really powerful item. So you try to shift every five seconds in order to get this buff and then there's also the reworked quick shift so they have reworked some of these passives down here so we have uh, this one this also gives you a stacking damage buff that um, can be stacked six times but it only lasts three seconds so you kind of have to shift quite often in order to keep this up but you generally can and you can do this quite easily with hunter's zenith so here we have this item and usually this was not really such a crazy tool, but it was already used for like kind of like a similar synergy in the past by making uh, your wear bear skills have no cooldown effectively. So the way this works is you have to kill an enemy with a wear wolf skill. In this case, your converted like you know, tornadoes that becomes werewolf skills with the Tempest Raw. And every time you kill an enemy and then you use a cooldown bear skill like Trample or the Debilitating Roar, it will have no cooldown. So you can see this in action here. If you look at my bar, you see here, I have Debilitating Roar running. I cast it, it comes back. I have it running and I cast it again and it comes back again. So the only thing you have to do is you have to try to get one killing blow between your Debilitating Roar casts or your Trample casts. And in this case, I actually have two different bear skills on the bar. So it's not that hard to kind of coordinate it and use it, you know, just sometimes for mobility, sometimes, you know, for actually like moving somewhere and, and like, you know, maybe engaging a pack or just as like a filler so that uh, I still have like another bear skill available and not drop my buffs throughout the run all the time. It takes a little bit of getting used to because of this three seconds timer for quick shift. But it's actually not all that bad as you constantly push forward throughout the dungeon, especially in the pit, there is nothing to loot. You can just go, you know, blast, blast, blast through the run, uh, kill enemies. And most of the time there is always like something on the screen. Not always, as you can see here, I guess. But um, yeah, there's generally monsters that you can kind of like chain kill and make sure that they keep up your buffs and always just get one killing blow, cast the build, hitting raw and repeat. And this also makes this build extremely safe, as you can see. You can kind of just walk into elite packs, press the build handling raw, that's 70% damage reduction, and you have this up basically all the time, as long as your kill speed is accurate, basically. So if you do like these kind of speed runs, three minutes, two minutes, or something like that, or four minutes even, uh, you're generally totally fine and kind of naturally 
go at a pace where you have this synergy going all the time and you're constantly resetting double setting raws. So this is really nice. Before that, it might be not that easy to actually get this whole combo going because you have rather long cooldowns. This debilitating raw here is like 90.8 seconds. This is with like a bit of cooldown, I think, somewhere. Um, but you can also do something like Maul. So this is what I have here in a Hurricane Grid. It's just like the Hurricane Planner right now, for example, where I try to stay in bear form. And uh, I don't necessarily do like a lot of these like switching shenanigans here, so I didn't actually invest points. But instead of Trample, for example, or instead of the build ending Raw, whichever one you want to give up, uh, for example, for lower end content and, you know, like lower pit tiers and so on, you might not really need the damage reduction. Uh, you can just go with Maul and you can just like Maul in the air or Maul like an enemy, get even a bit of resources if you want. But resources are generally solved later on. You don't really have to mess with them. You see here, I don't even have a generator on my bar. I literally just, you know, press tornado all the time and my resources go up anyway. So it's kind of easy to sustain once you have the full combo. But uh, more could be a pretty good early game choice, at least, to get this whole combo going with the shifting, as long as you have the Tempest Raw to convert into a werewolf when you cast your storm skills. So this works with basically any werewolf skills. This also works with Shred, for example. You can do exactly the same thing with Shred without the Tempest Raw even. And um, well, with the Hurricane, for example, there is like something similar you can do as well. If you really want to, you could probably try to, you know, shred and maul all the time or something like that and also convert back and forth. However, I feel like it works the best in an actual tornado build because you have, you know, this constant casting of a, a storm skill which converts you into a werewolf and then you constantly get this, those procs for Hunter Zenith. You have to get a werewolf kill and then reset the cooldown of your next cast basically so this is kind of how it works and there's also some other cool new stuff the druids are getting for example heightened senses is also getting a pretty massive buff again we have kind of like a buff for shifting either into wolf or into bear this one lasts six seconds so it's even easier to keep up but um, generally you try to do it every three seconds for quick shift however quick shift is easy to stack you just go back and forth a few times and you have it stacked up so even if this buff drops, you have like a five second timer on the boots and five seconds is definitely yeah, quite forgiving, I guess. And it's not that hard to not lose the boots throughout the run. So if you are used to, for example, the old, old tornado build that used Grizzly Rage back in like season zero and season one before the crit changes, for example, well, that is kind of out now. That's not really a thing anymore. Grizzly Rage in general just doesn't really cut it in my book. And I don't think we're going to see a lot of use of this in the near future. Although there are some synergies also that have been unlocked through tempered mods for this. For example, there's like Grizzly Rage Duration and maybe even cooldown reduction. I'm not sure, but you can effectively make like a permanent Grizzly Rage that lasts very long. And you can get these other synergies like the Dire Werewolf form that gave you like all this like resource cost reduction and these kind of things. Uh, and on top of this, you can actually stack up this damage bonus here much, much easier now and much higher as well. So we start with this 20% bonus and then it gets uh, plus 3% every second. And if you have like a 30 second Grizzly Rage, well, at the end, you're going to do like more than double damage or so. But even so, I don't think this really outweighs um, just this combo that you can do in particular because of the build heading raw and defenses and damage reduction being extremely valuable in late game now. So in general, the difficulty level of monsters has risen a lot in the high tier pits. So what you saw here in those clips, for example, this was like some pit 100 something. And monsters do hit like a truck there. And going into Grizzly Rage and then not having the build heading raw like ever and not having this Hunter Zenith combo is kind of bad. So that is really why I think that we're not really going to see much. And also some of the other synergies that Grizzly Rage does, for example, with Tornado, like um, giving you this resource cost reduction, you can easily get resource cost reduction these days from your two-handed weapons, for example. If you have a two-handed weapon, there is like a huge resource cost reduction roll, and you can make this a greater affix. You can get like 40-something, 50-something percent uh, resource cost reduction straight up on your weapon like this, for example. And then you can have like spirit on crit from, you know, the paragons, and you can have uh, the spirit on hit here, and you can have spirit per second even on your rolls, on your boots or something. And it's not that hard to actually sustain your resources, even without the Grizzly Rage. And because you constantly keep casting the build heading raws, you don't really need all too many other defenses in your setup. But you have to be aware that, especially in boss fights, you are going to be 
are very vulnerable because in this case in bosses most of the time there's no ads or very few at least you don't really get the resets on your debilitating raw so you can use it and shout here and there but it will have significant downtime compared to a normal run where you basically have it all the time so there's a huge difference also when i played on a ptr i definitely noticed for druids in particular the bosses were much harder than you know everything else basically compared so this is something to be aware of when you play with this hunter sendif combo but outside of that i mean you can go all in on damage we go for like shepherd's aspect triple companions all that kind of good stuff here that a lot of druid builds have been using in the past and this makes you really scale your damage to the moon and uh, these tornadoes they were like blasting even pit 200 in like two minutes or something i've seen like a um, level 200 like tormented grigoire kill or something in like 10 seconds or so of tornadoes they take for like millions of damage when you have like the full combo unlocked and uh, well they just destroy everything basically and because you can go really fast you can run at movement speed cap at all times you can kind of just like rush through the pit in particular in the pit uh, you always have monsters basically and there's nothing to sidetrack you like events or um, loot or anything you can get this debilitating raw combo much more easily than you would expect if you haven't tried it yet personally i had a lot of fun playing with this and especially once you get the muscle memory down of this and you kind of understand you know when you press your buttons in what order and so on with uh, this hunter of anything it felt really fun to play so i'm really looking forward to making a druid once season four comes out and playing this again so i just wanted to kind of like highlight this a little bit it's like a high level overview of what is happening with druids with all this like quick shift stuff with the boots and you know just like the new synergies that really unlock because druids didn't really seem like they got much in this patch but those uh, like shifting synergies and the new boots actually have a fairly large impact on some builds at least as i mentioned at least shred and tornado can definitely make use of this basically permanently because they are naturally werewolf builds but there is also some other cool stuff that it can do with uh, some of the other builds. So I could even, you know, play a bear build and try to like claw all the time to transform back into a wolf sometimes, for example. Or even Stormclaw can probably do something similar as well, where you attack as a wolf and then you um, like shift back into bear form sometimes and have to hunt a Zenith as well. So there are definitely some builds that will make use of this and they really scale up like crazy and the damage is extremely high on Druids. Unfortunately, I somehow managed to overwrite my old planner for the tornado here so that I just used this hurricane planner now that I had here. Uh, but I am planning to make like a proper tornado setup as well, the one that I played on a PDR. But I guess if you have played this in the past, there's not really any huge surprises outside of what I just explained for all the shifting stuff coming in there. So I will keep you guys updated about uh, the full build once we get there. Also, once the final patch notes dropped, there might be uh, some extra tweaks I have to make and so on. But it's definitely something I have on my list for Season 4 and for a guide coming out. So hope you enjoyed this little overview here for the Druids. I have more stuff coming about the Season 4 PTR, so stay tuned. And... I'll see you guys next time.